desire to do your will. Uh, whatever you want me to be, that's what I want to be. You think I wanted to be a pastor? Never crossed my mind. Even after I became a Christian, being a pastor never crossed my mind. Being a preacher never gave it the second thought. But see, God looked down into my heart, did he not? He searched my mind to see what position my heart was in. Searched my heart to see what position my mind was in. And he counted me, he, he counted me as something to even call me into the ministry. I've made all kinds of mistakes since then. I've done all kinds of things I shouldn't have done since then. Absolutely. Absolutely, but I don't live there anymore. That's the past. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do wrong of why you're trying to do right. You're not going to understand the Holy Spirit all of the time. You're going to make mistakes, mess up, fall by the wayside, but we don't have, but see, God's right there. But what He counted me as uh, to even call me into the ministry was faithful. God counted me faithful by call, just like he did Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul said he counted, I thank God that he counted me faithful by calling me into the ministry. This is not something I woke up one day to uh, and wanted to do. This is not something I had a desire to do since I was uh, young and I wanted to grow up, go to school for it. Man cannot teach me how to preach the word of God, period, end of conversation. Man can get in my way. Schooling, nothing wrong with schooling. If you can educate yourself, educate yourself. But if God has called you to preach, guess what? I'm living proof you're qualified right there and then. I'm living proof you can do it from right there, from that day forward. All you have to do is learn to put your trust in God. When I come in here, like I said uh, uh, this morning earlier, I was in Proverbs, just reading all through Proverbs. We're, on, we're, uh, we're in Luke. You know what that's called? Allow, not programming uh, the house of God. That's, allow, that's called allowing the Holy Spirit to have His perfect way. We get more out of services. We get more out of hearing the Word of God and the teaching of the Word of God when the Holy Spirit is allowed to have His perfect way. We always get more. We can grow by it. Otherwise, if I come in here and force Proverbs upon you, I'd have been doing my own thing uh, because I studied it. I'm ready for this one. Yeah, but it don't work that way, church. Lord, I've studied like you told me to do. Lord, I've uh, uh, done exactly what you expect of me because you told me to do it. Now, but when the time comes... Whatever is needed at that hour, you give it to me. I'll just want to be the spokesperson. I'll open my mouth by your grace. God, you fill it with what is needed. There's no other way to preach the word of God, church. Depend upon the Holy Spirit. You know, the way I preach and the way I explain to people, uh, because I get a lot of times, well... Um, how do you preach? How do you get your sermons together? Do you take all week to get your sermons? Like, I can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? It boggles their mind. I'll be like, oh, well, I do my best to read and study. But when the time comes, I can read and study on something all week long. I let them know that, and, and their eyes get big. They just simply can't believe it. I'm like, why is it so hard to believe? That's simply relying upon God. Trust and obey. The Lord tells you and me that if we had the faith as a grain of a mustard seed. Did you get that? As a grain of a mustard seed. You know how small a pea is? A mustard seed itself is so much smaller than that. Imagine how a grain of mustard seed, how small that is. But the Lord tells me, if I had the grain as a mustard seed, the faith of a grain as a mustard seed, I could say unto this sycamore tree, sycamore tree be plucked up by the roots and planted into the sea, and it would obey me. Say unto this mountain be ye removed and cast into the depths of the sea, it would obey me. A lot of people uh, look at this like, uh, you know, that mountain has something in your way. It could be. Absolutely. Metaphorically speaking, uh, speaking, absolutely. But I believe God at his word, literally speaking as well. You know why I believe it that both ways? Because nothing shall be impossible with God. If a man or a woman ha will put their faith in God, they're not going to have any wants in this walkway of life. All of their needs, 
They're not going to have any need, I, I should say. Uh, that's where the, I, the Lord is my shepherd. That's why I shall not want for anything. All of my needs are met. When we begin to put God on the back burner, we've made the biggest mistake right there. We've already messed up right there. When we begin to uh, try to write our own scripture around the word of God, we've already made a mistake right there. If, it does, if it's not in the word of God, don't argue about it. Let it go. Leave it alone. What's the point in talking about it? It's of no use to me. It, it brings on strife, contentions, uh, hatred, malice, all of that stuff. That's all it does. And it raise, arises, more, more questions arise from it. Put it away from it. Don't even get into it to begin with. Yeah, Brother Miller, I know that, but you know, mm, no, I'm done. You asked me a biblical question, gave you the biblical answer, that's it. There's a biblical answer. You asked me for it, I gave it to you. There's no buts. That's it. I'm done. Good day. God bless you. <laughs> I hope uh, that uh, you allow God to uh, uh, show you what I'm saying is true. If they allow God to do it, I guarantee he'll do it. <coughs> Let me continue on. <clears throat> and 19, I want to read it again. Now I want to begin with verse 18. There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger, or except for this man here. Out of 10, one came back. How sad do you think that makes God when he looks down from heaven now? You know, uh, let me uh, paint a picture for you, if I could. Right now, I can see, uh, I can imagine the heart of God broken. Uh, tears in the eyes of God when He looks down. And He looks upon us, maybe as He did Jerusalem, and He says, Oh, my people, how often I wanted to so bad to take you and fix your life and make things right and give unto you joy and peace, but you would not let me. You would not let me. You still won't let me. I speak to you, but you have heart in your hearts now. You will not listen. You do not no longer hear the Holy Spirit when it speaks to you. I look, I uh, think that way sometimes today but see the day will come when his mercy his heart be broken his long suffering his pleading it's going to be over it's going to be over and only the wrath of the almighty God will be poured out upon this world with no mixture whatsoever the full ultimate wrath of the almighty God. And what people are going to say. They'll want to listen then. They'll want to talk it over then. But there'll be no time to talk. There'll be no uh, uh, no room for any anything. No debating. No questions. No, it won't matter what concerns we have then. No matter how people will beg. And they will beg and plead and cry. And try their best to hide in the mountains begging the rocks to fall down upon them. Can you imagine what a state a person would have to be in if they will crawl into the mountains and the cliffs and beg all of that weight to fall down upon them just to hide them from the face of the Almighty God? What a state of horror they would have to be in to begin with. But it'll be too late, church. Sounds like a fairy tale in the human mind. But it's not a fairy tale, it's the fact, it's the truth. <clears throat> uh, and he said, verse 19, unto him arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Verse 20, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. That means you cannot place a day on the calendar to observe the kingdom of God. You can't do it. It don't come like that. Neither uh, shall they say, lo, here, here's the kingdom of God, or lo, there. Can't do it. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come 
when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, see here or see there. See, it's here. See, it's over there. Jesus said they'll do that. And this is what Jesus says about that. He says, uh, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that light, lighteneth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. We can look up and catch the lightning starting and it ends. Just like that. That's how the coming of the Almighty God is going to be. He's going to come. Every eye is going to see. We won't have to make no calls. Look up. Look outside. Look outside. We won't have to do that. Because the graves are burst open and the dead will raise from those graves, believe it or not, and wait upon the Almighty God. And they will stand before the Almighty God and they will give an account. Two things. We will hear one of two things. There's no ifs, there's no ands, there's no buts. We will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Come on in. I'll make you rule over many. We will either hear something like that or depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Worker of iniquity, you wrote your own laws. Worker, you worker of iniquity, you wrote your own Bible. You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. You did things your way. Well, I, it's not my fault. I don't know what the Word of God says. He give you eyes to uh, see. Let them see. He give you ears to hear. Let them hear. Because the Lord said way back in the day that he walked the earth is the, so much more truer today. Having eyes to see, they see not. Having ears to hear, they hear not. They're blinded and deaf when it comes to the word of God. We're doing things our way. God will forgive me, Willie. <laughs> Willie? God will forgive you if you mean it and you ask him. But to go right back out there and, and uh, do the lay the same path and lay the same ritual and do the same thing again? No. There's, there's no more sacrifices for your sin. No. You do it willingly, you're going against God. It's a choice. Well, I didn't mean for it. I know maybe you didn't mean for it to end up this way. But you know the right way. And you fail to do anything about it. We think many times... That God, we get ourselves thinking that God is going to accept our ways because of how long we've done something. I can preach now since I was 32 until God comes if it's 150 years from now. I could do it all those years and die without God. Because I'm behind the pulpit preaching don't make me a man of God. Because I carry a Bible in my hand don't make me a man of God. Because I might do some decent works in this world. It don't make me a man of God. I'll tell you what makes me a man of God. The blood of Jesus Christ that has been applied in my life. That and that alone makes me a man of God. Or a woman of God. Whoever we might be. Uh, 23. <clears throat> 4. 25. Okay. But first... Must he suffer many things? Uh, hmm. But first, must he suffer many things? Talking about his death that was going to come, and be rejected of this generation. He's still being rejected today, is he not? Uh, <clears throat> as in the days, as and as it was in the days of Noah, Jesus said, "So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man." And then he's going to tell us how they did in the days of Noah. They did eat, they drank, they married wives until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. They did everything they was doing right up until the very day that destruction came. They were warned, they were told for over a hundred years while the ark was being made. They wouldn't listen. 28, likewise, Jesus says, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, 
it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Caught them off guard. Took them all by surprise. But it wasn't stopped. It didn't stop because they did not expect it. Why? Because they were told. Because they were warned. But there's only a certain time that God does the warning. Even verse 30, thus shall it be, or even this same way shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away, and let that he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. And then it says, remember Lot's wife. I've had to this year, I don't know about anybody else, but I've had to this year get up on my house four or five times and replace shingles that have blown off. I'm on a corner. And I get all of the wind. And our house is a little bigger than the ones around me, so we kind of block them fellers. But we get all the wind. I've had to crawl up on the house. I could have been up on the house uh, fixing that roof when the Lord came back. Could have been. It better not enter my mind. Oh my God, the Lord's here. I better, I've only got a few seconds to get down, go back inside the house and get my stuff. I ain't taking none of it with me. Don't worry about it. If I'm out in a field plowing, the Lord come. Oh man, let me go get my wife and kids. I got to get them ready. I can't do that. And, it, and then it says, remember Lot's wife. Lot and his wife and his two daughters. They were told to flee from Sodom and Gomorrah, flee from this place, because God will indeed of a surety destroy this place. Do not look back, no matter what you hear. Do not look back. Lot's wife looked back. She became a pillar of salt. They were told, don't look back. Why? Don't look back, because if you look back upon your little shack that you live in, me look back upon my little shack, I don't care if it's a mansion down here. It's still a little shack compared to what waits. If I look back in this world, if I return back anywhere when God's uh, here, that tells, shows God that's where my heart is and that's where my treasure is. If my heart is in my house or something in this world, this world has my treasure. And a, uh, anybody that takes hold of the plow, the plow being God, because he's going to keep you on that straight and narrow path. He's going to keep you on the right direction. Any man that takes hold of the plow and then begins to look back, he's not, f from where God has brought him, he's not fit to enter into the kingdom of God. Make up your mind. Settle it today in your hearts and in your minds. When, expect the Lord to come at any time because He's coming one, oh, whether you're ready or not. He's coming whether you believe it or not. He's coming whether you want Him to or not. And when He comes, don't worry about anything. You're going to be with Him or you're not. Simple as that. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to finish this. <clears throat> 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it or shall save it. I tell you, Jesus says, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Let's, let's rightly divide the word of God uh, so we can understand. If I'm laying in the bed alone, there's still two men laying there. The inward man that you do not see, he's going to be taken. The outward man, which is the flesh and blood, he's going to be left. No flesh and blood enters into the kingdom of heaven. God's taken his Holy Spirit. He's going to clothe it with a forever body, a spiritual body. It, don't have, it can't be two men that goes against God's own word, laid up, doing their abomination, and God's going to take one of them. I just want us to understand. Two women shall be grinded together. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, 
thither or there will the eagles be gathered together. Now, <clears throat> wheresoever a dead body is going to be, or a lifeless body, which if it's a lifeless body, it's going to be a dead body. The eagles does not literally mean eagles in this uh, particular uh, verse. It means the vultures. Vultures got to eat too, you know what I mean? The inward miller is going to be taken. The outward miller is going to be left. <clears throat> Two men behind the pulpit preaching the word of God. The Holy Spirit is going to be taken. Brother Miller, what you see is just going to drop down and he's not going anywhere except the grave. But don't weep for me if that should happen while I'm preaching the word of God. I went out doing God's work. He called me home while I was in the process of doing his work. What a glorious way to go. He, he, to me, that's kind of like uh, Enoch, a uh, God, and God loved Enoch, and, and Enoch walked with God uh, so close that God just took him. So if I'm here preaching and doing God's work, he just takes me. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. My spirit will be like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just giving you, just telling you. Any questions, comments? I'm done. I absolutely, amen, always thank God for the word. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to sneak down for a uh, uh, altar of prayer or circle of prayer, <clears throat> whichever way uh, you want to do it. Uh,